Hi all my pinball fans. I'm here to show you uh, how to hook up the button board, kind of talk about how it works, the different features it has, and hopefully it'll help any of you who are thinking about buying one or have bought one and need to understand how to hook it up and everything. Okay. So the first thing I want to talk about is kind of how you hook it up. I already have it hooked up right now, but I just want to go over essentially what happens here. So you've got this cable here. Okay. These are the button inputs. Okay. And on my main board, I have a some pins exposed right on the top that have 14 of the button inputs exposed on those pins. And you can just plug that directly from the main board into here, and that'll run all your 14 inputs. So it's actually the same as these guys. These, these are button inputs 1 through 14 on the board. They're exposed there as well. Um, but it's just really easy to run the, the cable out to the uh, button board. And at that point, you have all your inputs kind of distributed out onto the button board instead of all all inside the, this board here. Uh, so really that's all you really need to do to make this work. So all this other stuff, the expansion board and this, that's optional. If you want to have the lighted outputs on the button board can be controlled by DOF, then you need to get this expansion board, plug into the main board, and the 16 channel output from the from the expansion board will go into the 16 channel input on the button board. And at that point, you can then control your lighted outputs to all your buttons with DOF. If you don't want to do that, you know, you can disconnect all of this. Okay, so this is off out of the equation now. And you can run 12 volts to this button board, just like I have. I've got 12 volts on here. And now you can still power your buttons, your lighted buttons. The only difference is that they will always be on. Okay, so there's a bunch of jumpers up here, okay, and those will uh, set it to be s the switched input from here or just the constant power input from this power supply. So I've got one of them uh, set uh, switch number five. So if I plug that in, you'll see it still lights up, okay, and you also have your button input. So you can still have lighted buttons with the button board. They're not controlled by DOF. They won't turn it on and off with different events in the table. Uh, but you can still have kind of the nice lighted buttons, and the button board still makes it really easy to hook those up. And one of the main reasons why I designed this thing is because of how difficult it is to wire up a bunch of buttons and a bunch of lighted buttons to your cabinet without making a complete rat's nest in there, having you know long lengths of wires running around. And uh, this just breaks everything out real nicely. And you can see uh, a lot of pe times people will daisy chain wires. I don't like doing that because then I've got all my buttons connected to each other inside the cabinet. You can't take them out easily. You can't put them in easily. When you purchase my buttons, I give you wires that are this length exactly. And it's just long enough so that pretty much for any cabinet, you can just plug them right into the button board. This button board obviously has you know, the ability to be run right on the front of your cabinet. And then these are for your flippers and your magna saves. Those go to the sides of your cabinets and you're, you're ready to go. Uh, so that's that. Now, if you want lighted buttons, of course, you got to use the expansion board. So that's where that comes into play. So I plug that guy in. And now let me just talk about the rest of it, okay? So the, these are for your flippers and your magna saves. And they're separated out so that you can run this cable over and, uh, and, and have those kind of in another location that's closer to the, to the buttons. And, uh, and when you plug these in, you can see I've got the cable kind of mated like that. Always make sure the cables are going kind of away from the boards. You see how these are all, when you plug them in, the cables are going away from the boards. Um, they are, there are like <coughs> two sets of these. So, so that these, they're kind of, they're the same board, but they've got um, labels on them. So just make sure when you're plugging them in, see that label, let's see if I can get the lighting on there right. I can't really. Um, but if you see that label it says B plus, B minus, uh, v plus R, G, and B. Okay, it's labeled just like that. The button board has that same label. It has B plus, B minus. You probably can't see it from there, but it's the same exact labeling. Just make sure that when you put them next to each other like this, uh, that it matches up. So they both read B plus on the top, and they read B minus, then B plus. Okay, if you got it written like that, and then you plug it in like this, uh, then it's going to work perfectly. Okay, you're not going to have any issues. So that's how you plug those in. And then, okay, what happens here? So for my RGB buttons, which I also sell, there is uh, a little pin cable you can use, and you can plug that in. 
There's also screw terminals that you can use on the button board. So if you don't want to use this pin cable, you can just use the screw terminals to you know, cut the wires and splice them and do whatever you want. But it's nice that you can just plug these in. So if I just um, take this and plug it into here to the plus, and then the button part, this is what's hooked up to the, the switch itself on the button. And by the way, these are leaf switches. Okay, so they're really nice uh, for pinball machines because there's no clicking switch in there. It's completely leaf, leaf activated, which means you can do all your, you know, really fast, like if you just tap it really fast, it'll just do a super fast uh, switch on your, on your flipper. Okay, so I've got this plugged in. Okay, your, your yellow wire is your plus, and then it's pretty obvious R, G, and B, it's, it's red, green, and blue. The wires are actually red, green, blue, and on the board it's labeled plus RGB. So just make sure you plug it in that way, and then you're good to go. And now as I turn these on, you'll see you get R, and then green, and then blue. Okay, so it all works, good to go. And that's your flipper. So that's button one is your flipper on your right side. Button two is your magna save on your right side. And then button three is your flipper on your left side and the flippers by the way though for the outputs for DAW one two and three so the same outputs run both flippers and DAW and that's how DAW is set up the flippers are tied to each other okay but for your magna saves they're separate so and if I plug this into the magna save so I'll do that one next so this is the right magna save that'll be uh, DAW output four, five, and six. And then your left magna save is DOF output seven, eight, and nine. So the first nine outputs are for your flippers. First three are for your two flippers, both sides. And then the next three are for your right magna save and the last three are for your left magna save. And those are for buttons one, two, three. So one, two, three, and four. Okay. So right is one and two, left is three and four. So that's your those two sets of buttons there. And then you've got uh, the rest of the buttons. Okay. So there's buttons uh, from five to fourteen. The button inputs are on here, and those plug in. Uh, it's pretty simple to do those. I already showed you how if you have the power supply in here and you have these jumpers switched, then it'll just be constant on. Buttons uh, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, uh, and 11, and 12. So all the way up to button 12, or sorry, all the way up to buttons 11, sorry. Buttons 11 are DOF controllable. The lighted outputs are DOF controllable. The last three, so 12, 13, and 14, those are just going to be always on. So if I have 12 volt power going to here, then these lights are just going to be on all the time. They're they're not DOF controlled because there's just not enough. This has a 16 channel output board, and so I just use all the 16 channel outputs and left these last three to just be on all the time. And you have to run power to get those three to be on. So if I disconnect my power from here, they're just not going to work. No, the lights aren't going to work. The buttons inputs will still work, so you're still using the normal buttons. Uh, but to get them lighted up, you'll have to run power to the board itself. And there's um, there are 11 jumpers on here, and each jumper is for for the first 11 buttons. So the first jumper is for the for the right flipper. You can actually say tell that one to always be on if you want. If you don't have you know DOF control buttons, you can even do the right flipper always on. Now, if you want single color LEDs on your flippers, you can do that too. The way that you do that on this these these pinouts where I plugged the R, the RGBs in, it's actually labeled plus R G B and then J, and J is for your jumpers. So if you want, you can put you can jumper the B and the J, and then when you plug your 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 single color button in there, you'll actually wire it so that you've got the plus into the plus and then your negative to the B. Okay, and now when I turn this on, I'll actually turn on the B, 
and the B output, the blue output, ends up being your what is your your lighted output. Now, if I don't have the jumper in there, the only thing that'll happen is see it'll get dimmer. You probably hardly even saw that. It's not really necessary to have the jumper in there, but that's so that it gets a full 12 volt signal. Uh, because what's what happens is with the RGB uh, LEDs, you have to run resistors, current limiting resistors for these RGB buttons. So I have those resistors mounted on the board. The jumper just bypasses the resistor. So when you're not using the, the jumper, uh, there's a little less current flowing through the LED for the most part, of course. Like I said, you can still see it, it's still bright. It's just a little bit dimmer than it normally would be because it's used to to limit that current. And let's see if you can see it when it goes back on. Yes, it's pretty It's pretty minimal. You can see it, but it's, it's not a huge deal. Okay, so that's pretty much it, I believe. Oh, there's one other thing, and I just want to talk about how this board, while I have it plugged into my main board, and obviously it's really simple to hook up that way, there's barely any wires involved, uh, you can hook it up to anything, because I expose all the button inputs right here. So I've got a ground, and then all the button inputs to 14. You can hook this up into a bare KL25Z if you wanted to, another vendor's board, whatever, it'll work with anything. It's just, uh, it just happens that if you have my board, you can just run this one cable to it. It makes it really simple. Same with the 16 inputs. Uh, you can, I sell um, these expansion boards. They're pretty cheap. And then I also have a breakout board for them with all the pinouts that you can plug directly into a KL25Z. So if you wanted to have like a bare KL25Z, but you still wanted to have this, uh, this expansion board, you can use that to power the lights in here or like uh, the light bar as well that I sell. So I think that's it. Uh, it's a lot. I know there's like a lot of stuff going on with this thing, but it's just such a, it's such a nice thing to have if you're building a cabinet. Um, it was one of my biggest frustrations when I built my first cabinet was trying to run all those button wires. There's tons of them. When you think about 14 buttons and you know, eight, potentially four or even five of them can be RGB buttons. So it's like, you know, you're talking like a hundred wires that you've got to run and they're all over the place in your cabinet if you're trying to run them to one place. So this just breaks everything out, makes it really easy to do. And uh, hopefully you guys found this useful and I hope you're, you know, you're interested and it makes your cabinet building experience a lot better, a lot nicer for you. So uh, with all that, I hope you guys are having a great time building your pinball cabinets. I know I've been very busy. Hopefully, uh, hopefully I'm able to get all these orders out that I've got piling up on me. Um, but I wanted to make this video because it just seems like this is one of the uh, things that I sell that I don't have a lot of good documentation on. So that'll help with anyone who's uh, who's using this product. Hopefully you'll be able to watch this and now understand how it all works. So thanks everyone and see you next time.